So this is our fan house. Uh, my name is Vanessa. I'm the nursery officer of the uh, END species team. We are situated in Scotland. Our main role is to collect all the in rare endemic species, well, all of the endemic species around the island in different situations. We, we managed to get a project through BASS. My part of the project is to, uh, to get a laminated flow cabinet to propagate by some of the rarest fans we got here on St. Lena. At the moment, we're standing in our fan house. We did an extension a few months ago on here, so it can... Once we got the ferns grown in the sterile laminated cabinet, what we're hoping to get on the ship, we will then transplant them into here. But it can take up to two or three years to, to be big enough to put back here. And then once we got established in here, we also can establish them in their own habitat. And that is like Diana's Peak or High Peak. It is the only tree fern we have on St. Helena. Ferns take many, many years to, to grow into these big plants because this here one been here for nearly 10 years now and you can see how big it is. You know, we don't, we don't need invasive species, we need to conserve our own, in, um, our own habitat and our own endemic. So they're this, this unique to St. Helena. We need to grow the ferns as an understory and the ground cover. It is good for the ecosystem, so we can't just be growing the trees and the shrubs and stuff. We need to grow the smaller plants as well. It may not be for the short term, you know, because ferns take years to grow, this um, piece of equipment will last, you know, for many, many years. It'll be good for conservation in the long run. So for nurseries for nature, we'll upgrade the facilities at Millennium Forest. It will upgrade the shade house and the standing out area to a much larger size and also so that it is a more comfortable working area. The brand new shade house will go on this side and the standing up benches will be all along here. The purpose of the benches is so that they will harden the plants before they were ready to be planted in the wild. So once they come and take off the shade house it means they have reached quite a nice height and they're almost they're ready to be hardened off and they'll come here and then they'll be um, exposed. So the covers will be over the benches. So it'll be how much exposure they want to the wind, to the sun and how much moisture they will actually get. So at Millennium Forest, we'll focus on three key endangered species. That will be the salad plant, uh, the tea plant, and the cliff hair grass. The Millennium Forest currently um, produces a wide range of species, but the three species we're going to focus on, the tea plant, salad plant, and cliff hair grass, we want to increase the plant production for them because at the moment they are only produced at very low capacities. So we want to increase that to accommodate that. We need a larger shade house. Under the project, we will hire a project manager, a full-time nursery officer, and a part-time land virus worker, all of which to cope with the increase in plant production, as well as other stuff that needs to be done for the project. Um, the Malayan Fire supervisor and the heritage team will be building the brand new shade house. That's the whole point of this patch here. We call it genetic field gene bank, which is just another way of saying genetic diversity in one place, but in the field rather than a seed bank. So they grow, they produce flowers, then they seed, the seed fall on the ground and that germinate and the guys in the nursery will come and pick up the little seedlings and as they pick them out they strengthen them up in the nursery and once they get about so size we can take them out and spread them all across the peaks here and by doing that we spreading the genetic whole of what we still have available because we now have all the clones from taken from everywhere in one place and that can now provide us the materials that we need to take weeds out and put endemics back in its place. Since January to the middle of February, they've already planted out of this um, over 3,000 seedlings, um, which is great. Previously, our best for the whole year was about 6,000. So this year, it seemed like the production is more regular and the speed at which we're producing things, the methods is improved. 
um, and the team that's working in here is, is doing really well. So that together with the genetic field gene bank and the increased facilities, just started this January, finished in December, um, we can have the facility, watering facilities, the structures, uh, the tables and um, an extra staff member they're paying for so that we can have the hands to, to keep on to it. So we just finished the fence now, we need to do the, the little gate. Um, we're creating soil, soil sterilization facilities and at the moment we're moving plants around so there's a few empty gaps but if you come down this way I'll show you where we're going to do the little shade house. So as the tables are on this side we'll put tables on this side also. We have a path down the center and uh, this will lead you into which is then the tunnel structure which will go almost to the fence. It's about 11 meters long and about 10 wide. Colin up there is uh, the man from the National Trust and they seconded Colin to our team, which we're very thankful for because with that extra pair of hands we can continue looking after the plants because uh, the more sun, the less rain you have, of course, your plants then require more water than they would have otherwise. As soon as you get a sprinkle of rain, we don't need to do the watering. The gods do it for us.